What's up, college football addicts? Now, I have recently learned of more bombshell evidence, which strongly indicates that the ACC is very likely on the verge of an imminent collapse. And I'm going to go ahead and break down the entire timeline for you today. This information comes from a pretty trusted source with direct knowledge of the ESPN media deal and the network side of the negotiations. Now, again, this source has been highly accurate on conference realignment info for years. But before we get started, I do want to give you a quick thank you. I appreciate you for joining us today. Happy to have you at College Football Addiction. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future content coming on conference realignment. If this is your first time, I do want you to know that I try to be pretty clear and differentiate between fun speculation, fair possibilities, good possibilities, or highly likely possibilities. Today, in my opinion, I am reporting that the ACC has run out of options. I am upgrading my prior assessment of catastrophic changes to the league happening before the season starts. I'm thinking that it's now gone from a good possibility to highly likely, meaning maybe 90%. So let's get this started. The first thing that I want to cover is the ACC versus Florida State, North Carolina court case. And there are three critical pieces of information that you need to understand that came out of this case. I know you guys aren't here to listen to me talk about a court case, so we're going to keep this pretty short and sweet, but the information is important for you to understand later. So here's what you need to know. The North Carolina judge ruled that he believed the case should be held in North Carolina, which is a win for the ACC. He also ruled that FSU does not have any fiduciary duty to the conference, which was a big win for Florida State. And lastly, FSU has appealed his decision on venue up to the North Carolina Supreme Court. The next thing I want to talk to about you about quickly is the ACC versus FSU court case. Several catastrophes came out of that court case for the ACC. And again, I'm covering this because you're going to need it later. This case is important because it will determine whether the trial will proceed in North Carolina or Florida or whether both trials may even proceed forward together at the same time. So as far as what was catastrophic for the ACC, three things came out of this. The Florida judge sided with FSU against the ACC and refused to stay the case. He found the ACC guilty of venue shopping and accused them of that several times and did not recognize their first filing. But he also said something else which should be far more concerning to the ACC because he seemingly favored FSU and one of their arguments that the grant of rights should be completely invalid because the Board of Trustees never authorized the document. There's another hearing coming up on April 22nd to finish the opening arguments, the motion to dismiss, the motion to st uh, stay the case, which has already been decided, and then the motion to hold discovery up. Given what went down during the first hearing, it seems very unlikely that the judge is going to entertain the ACC's arguments to dismiss the case or stay discovery. It seems far more likely that the judge is going to disagree with the North Carolina judge and rule that Florida should be where the case is housed. Now, that creates a complete nightmare scenario for the ACC with dual court cases happening at the same time in different states. But the bombshells didn't just stop there at the courthouse. Now, recently, I told you guys about the details of the clause in the ACC ESPN media deal known as the composition clause. And this composition clause gets triggered if two teams leave the ACC prior to June 30th, 2024. Well, what I'm now learning is that this composition clause allows for ESPN to do two critical things. Now, first, it allows ESPN to fully renegotiate their deal with the ACC immediately. Or, and I'll tell you, this is a huge or, it allows ESPN to immediately extinguish the ACC media deal, if they choose to do so. Now, you guys may remember that the ACC hastily added Stanford, Cal, and SMU during the offseason this past year in a move that made no financial sense for the conference because these were teams that didn't add value to the conference. But the main reason they added these three teams was in an effort to avoid the composition clause from kicking in in order to offset the potential departures of Florida State, Clemson, and UNC. 
But they missed several critical things with their calculations. First, adding these three teams did not make ESPN happy. Second, when the North Carolina judge ruled that Florida State and Clemson do not have a fiduciary duty to the league, the legal liability and risk of leaving the conference was greatly limited. Third, the ACC has already violated its own bylaws several times. Just to name a few of these, they didn't take a vote to extend the deadline on the unilateral ESPN media deal in 2021. They didn't take a vote to file a lawsuit against an active member when they filed against FSU. And there are at least a half a dozen other things that we've covered in other videos, which we don't necessarily have time to get into today. These numerous bylaw violations have opened the door for both Clemson and Florida State to completely disregard the bylaws going forward. So in other words, you can throw out all the rules. And one of those rules getting tossed out is insanely important because it's the rule that requires a team to notify that they are leaving the conference on August 15th of the prior year. So long story short, Florida State and Clemson fully intend to disregard the ACC bylaw and withdraw from the ACC membership prior to June 30th, 2024. And in doing so, they will intentionally trigger the ESPN ACC media deal composition clause, which would bring on the worst case scenario to the ACC. But that's not all. This gets even better, if you can believe it, because the biggest bombshell is probably exponentially worse for the ACC. Now, first, I want you to think about the three alleged facts being leveraged against the Atlantic Coast Conference. The fact that FSU and Clemson are leaving in the next few months. The fact that the Florida judge appears to be siding with FSU. So there could be potentially two different court cases going on at the same time with maybe two different rulings at the end of the day. And the fact that ESPN will be able to use the composition clause against the ACC if Florida State and Clemson depart prior to June 30th, 2024. Now remember, FSU and Clemson already plan to depart the ACC this offseason. It, it makes no difference whether they leave prior to or after June 30th, but it makes a huge difference for all of those other ACC teams and ESPN. So you better believe that all of this is being used in negotiations. And if this wasn't bad enough, the biggest bombshell is probably much worse for the ACC. Just to refresh, back in December of this year, it was revealed by FSU's filing that ESPN unilaterally had the ability to end the ACC media deal in 2027. Several weeks later, this was confirmed by Ross Dellinger of Yahoo Sports, Josh Pay of The Late Kick Show. Now, weeks ago, we revealed to you guys that ESPN has already told the ACC that they don't plan to extend that deal in 2027. This was massive news when we broke it, and this essentially meant that the ACC media deal and the accompanying grant of rights would be expiring in June of 2027. And don't forget, the grant of rights, per its own wording, exists only to serve the current ACC media deal and no other media deals. So when the ACC media deal ends, so does the grant of rights. And if the ACC media changes at all, the grant of rights must be re-signed by all the members. And this is the wording directly in the grain of rights. So now you understand all of the backstory and why the ACC is in deep, deep trouble. We can move on to our biggest bombshell yet today. I've now learned that the ACC has been given an ultimatum and that they have been told they have two options. The first option is they will either settle with FSU and Clemson prior to June 30th, 2024, or that FSU and Clemson will leave, which in turn will trigger the ACC media deals composition clause. And ESPN will move to extinguish the ACC media deal on or before August 16th, 2024. So let me repeat that to make sure that it's pretty clear for you. ESPN has let the ACC know if the composition clause gets triggered this offseason that they will end the existing ACC media deal on or prior to August 16th, 2024. And again, the composition clause is guaranteed to be triggered if the ACC doesn't settle with Clemson and Florida State prior to June 30th, 2024. Now, needless to say, if the ACC media deal ends, it would have absolutely massive implications for the 2024 college football season. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. 
But first, this means one of two things are highly likely. And again, when we say highly likely, I think that you're estimating that at around 90%. Either the ACC is going to settle with Florida State and Clemson prior to the June 30th deadline and let them go, or the ACC is going to lose their media deal, and their grant of rights will cease to exist, and the conference will likely fall apart. Now, I know this may be hard for some of you to believe, but trust me, I wouldn't tell you this if it wasn't from somebody that I absolutely trusted. In my opinion, this seems very much like a standoff between two countries with nuclear bombs pointed directly at each other. And for some reason, the ACC seems too stupid to make the best decision for the league. Instead, they look like they want to fight this out in court, and it will likely cost them in the end. So let's say the ACC makes the call that they would rather have the conference blow up than settle with Florida State and Clemson. What does that mean? Well, first off, the ACC is going to file for emergency rulings on the grant of rights against Florida State and Clemson in North Carolina. Florida State and Clemson are going to do the same thing back in their respective states. And those half dozen times that the ACC violated the bylaws is going to be front and center in court. And all of the dirty laundry over the year to the Swafford's corruption is going to be front and center in a court of law. And the ACC is going to find out you don't get to selectively choose when not to follow the bylaws of the conference. Once you break it once, once you break it twice, once you continue to break it, those bylaws lose their meaning. And I'm not going to go into all the ways the ACC grant of rights would be completely screwed in this scenario in court because we've covered that recently. You can go back and check those videos out if you'd like to. But I feel highly confident that the ACC cannot win any arguments based on the grant of rights and that no money will be paid for that contract. Now, as far as exit fees go, is there a slightly better chance? It's hard to say. Those exit fees are governed by the same bylaws that the ACC has also broken. But maybe it comes down to a roll of the dice on the exit fees. Either way, from Clemson and Florida State's perspective, this roll of the dice is absolutely worth it because it completely eliminates the ACC from being able to drag this on for years. And it expedites resolution because these unknowns will get ruled on and settled more quickly. These things have to be figured out quickly because there will be no media deal left for any other team in the ACC. Now, as far as the rest of the ACC, the ACC, without its media deals that has been in court for uh, however long, has been beaten in court, will be absolute sitting ducks. After having their media deal removed, there's a decent chance that eight members will finally figure out that it's in their best interest to dissolve the league. And they take their risk trying to get into the Big 12 or into the SEC or Big 10 at a reduced rate, rather than allowing the smaller schools to continually fight them for what's left of a smaller and smaller piece of the pie. So now you understand just how screwed the ACC is with this ESPN media deal and the composition clause. The problem is that you may not fully understand the other half of the equation, which is the ACC grant of rights. And all the loopholes that are being used by teams to destroy it. So if you want to get caught up on that side, you can click the video on the screen right now to learn more.